I believe that digital cinema is simply a uh, result of a, a analog process being informed by a, a digital age. And then it becomes something that's necessary for a film student to inform himself about to be relevant in this age. The reason why we decided to actually use uh, the right camera as a, a platform is because this camera was more accessible to us. It's more accessible than the RD21, it's more accessible to us than the Alexa, which is a, 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 a neuro camera. And the accessibility to the right camera allows us to be able to understand this workflow. Not only understand this workflow, but to work with a camera that doesn't burn any information to the image that uses a, 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 a what we call a, a data process that's raw where you could get more information from from the from the actual data that's there to to have more latitude in, in color correction in post production. So um, f for us the accessibility of this camera allowed us to have a, a better working understanding of digital cinematography. So we decided to to use the right camera as a platform to to, to inform ourselves as students. In this session, we're gonna go through some of the critical components necessary to have when using the camera. This is the camera body. Here you find the screw holes, the connections for um, attaching the bridge plate onto the camera body in their different sizes and different variations for different types of base plates. We're going to use a third party plate to attach a real system onto the camera body. One of the important things to always make sure you have is a, a large or a medium sized screwdriver for the screw sizes that come with base plates. These are the rails, and here you see that the top rail system is already attached onto the camera body, so we can install these first two rails. And install the next pair onto the base plate. These grooves point to the side of the plate that must go in, and this goes into the base plate. In the corresponding direction. Here, we use this lever to clamp and tighten the base plate onto the camera body. One of the reasons why I didn't actually push in the first top pair all the way through is because I found from my experience working with the camera system, some people like to actually use the actual weight behind to balance kit up front like lenses, matte boxes or simply the preference is to install all the kit that needs to go on the rail first and then slide it in. A heavy duty tripod is really important because the weight of this camera, the legs especially need to be very very strong to sustain the weight and to keep camera movement stable. Always check the fluidity of the head before leaving the rental company. When you install the camera onto the tripod, make sure that it's locked in firm. These types of base plates that come with um, 
real systems really allow flexibility with mounting kit onto the camera. You know, it allows you to get your right balance with the lens kit or the map box you're using up front. And this is really important as it relates to balance when it comes to tilting and, and panning work. We're going to install the monitor elbow onto this particular area. I'm going to use this particular joint on the camera handle to install the 5.6 inch LCD monitor that comes with the red camera the standard. Now it's important to note that these monitors shouldn't be used to get exposure levels or color balance. They're just simply to be used for framing. Here we're going to install our one for Baker third party arm to attach the EVF electronic viewfinder to the camera body. It's important to note here also that these particular um, arms come with safety pins that can stop the EVF viewfinder from going on or coming off. In some cases people could mistakenly damage the kit. Here at this joint you can readjust the distance that the EVF is on to the camera body for your own personal preference. This is a viewfinder connection where the EVF cable connects to the camera body. It's important to run the cable over the area where the lens will be installed to stop clutter. This is the monitor connection. And one important tip here when making connections is that the red dot goes to the red dot. So the red dot on the cable will go to the red dot on the particular kit that you're installing the cable onto correspondingly. This will stop you from damaging pins. We're going to use a battery cradle that has the hard drive and the, and the battery on the same cradle. You can get this from any rental company. We're going to slide on the top pair of rails into the camera body just to make our setup a bit more compact at this point. And this connection is the connection for the battery cradle. And this is the basic the batteries that Red uses. This is a, a red brick battery. This is the hard drive from Red, 320 gigabyte. This is really good for longer recording times. Um, What is important is to be really careful and not to allow the hard drive to fall into the cradle. Just slide it in, tighten it, make sure it's secure. Best to use your right angle on the hard drive and the straight connection onto the camera body. Here is the CF slot and the CF card goes into the slot. It's really simple and easy. These cards come at 8GB and 16GB. They are now 32GB also.
We're going to use the Carl Zeiss T1.4 primary lens set. We're also going to use the RE follow focus kit. And we're going to use a, a matte box from RE, install up front, onto a real system, and mount it onto the tripod. This is the Ari Follow Focus Kit. And you know, you, I prefer to put it on before the lenses. Oh. You just slide it back and forth, and then get it into the position you want it to be in. We're going to use PL mount lenses today. Now, there's no particular correct way to put on the lens other than to fit it into the joint properly. We prefer to keep the front lid onto the lens. And after you secure it to the camera body, then remove the front lid. These lenses really produce 35 millimeter light depth of field onto the right camera given a certain cinematic quality to actually using these lenses with the right camera. Now we're going to install the Ari Fall Focus Kit onto the lens. We slack the lever and then attach the gear onto the gear on the lens. Now what's important here is not to over tighten the gears because you want the contact to remain smooth and not stiff, which is really important for pulling focus. You want the focus pulling to be responsive, so it's best to get it as smooth as possible. So over tightening is one thing you don't want to do here. We're going to install the matte box over the real system by slackening the joints. And then we slide it back over the lens on the real system. On the top of the matte box, we'll find the top lid screws so we can install the top lid onto the matte box. Now this particular matte box comes with four lids, one for the top, one for the bottom, and two side lids, left and right. Today we are going to only install the top lid on the left and the right lid because we think this is all that is necessary for today. And that is the matte box on the real system over the lenses. And this offers maximum protection from auxiliary light. Now, on this particular matte box is a pin that allows the matte box to act like a door. This saves time professionally when it comes to changing lenses. It allows you to get in to the lens quick remove the lens, install a new lens, and you're ready to shoot again. <laughs>